I have a lot of issues with TikTok, and it's one social media platform I refuse to use. However, when I look at how Congress plans to deal with this platform, I see even more problems. I also read and listened to several commentators about the bill and find even more problems with their suggestions. So what do we the people do when our representatives in Congress have a personal vendetta against a foreign company? We'll discuss that next on the Constitution Study. Everyday Americans, Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution, teach your rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me today. You know, TikTok is one of those controversial companies, and it's for good reason. But I have to ask the question, is what Congress is planning to do a cure worse than a disease? We'll take some time and look at the details of the bill. And then at the end of the episode, we'll talk a little bit more about the Constitution Study and maybe ways you can help support the work that we're doing here. But for now, let's talk about that TikTok ban bill and see what's under the covers. Like most social media and mobile applications, TikTok is a data vacuum. Yes, though TikTok is one of the worst abusers of its users' trust, it is by no means alone. So why has this particular social media company drawn such bipartisan ire from the members of Congress? Now, I freely admit I've never used TikTok, and I have no plans to do so in the future. Why, you ask? After all, it could be quite beneficial in getting the message of the Constitution study out, especially among young people. The answer is quite simple. Treason. I'm not saying anyone who uses TikTok is committing treason, but it seems to be pretty close, especially for those who support its infrastructure here in the United States. TikTok has been shown to be spyware, but then again, that's true of just about every app on your phone and every website you visit. There have been reports of the TikTok app listening on your microphone, watching via your camera, tracking your location, and reading every keystroke you type. That makes TikTok one of the worst spyware apps on the market, right up there with Google's Android operating system, Chrome browser, Gmail, Google Docs, and Google Maps. By the way, I do all I can, I can to avoid those applications as well. So what makes TikTok different? TikTok is owned by ByteDance, which is a Chinese company. By communist Chinese law, not only is ByteDance required to turn over any information the government asks for, but I believe they're required to propagandize for that government as well. I'm pretty sure that all app companies that operate in China are turning over data as well, but mostly data it collects from the Chinese people. I could be wrong, and if evidence comes to light that apps are sharing my data with governments, foreign or domestic, without my permission, I'll drop those as well. I guess that means my phone's homepage will be getting pretty bare, won't it? Yes, every app on your phone and every website you visit tries to collect data about you. Yes, many and most of the companies that develop these apps sell their data to data brokers who may sell that information to governments, foreign and domestic, and that's a problem. There's more. TikTok manipulates the information they show its audience in the United States to promote their own agenda. But they're not alone in that either. Today, however, we are talking about H.R. 7521, commonly known as the TikTok ban. Now, formerly known as the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Application Act, H.R. 7521 claims to protect you from foreign spying and influence. I took a look at the legislation. It seems more like a, a political stunt than something designed to protect the American people. Let's start with the title. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Application Act. Good. Except this bill does not protect you from foreign adversary controlled applications. In fact, from the legislation itself, we read, it shall be unlawful for an entity to distribute, maintain, or update, or enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating of a foreign adversary controlled application by carrying out within the land and maritime borders of the United States any of the following. 
providing services to distribute, maintain, or update such foreign adversary controlled application, including any source code of such application, by means of a marketplace, including an online mobile application store, through which users within the land or maritime borders of the United States may access, maintain, or update such application. Providing internet hosting services to enable the distribution, maintenance, or updating of such foreign adversary controlled application for users within the land and maritime borders of the United States. Now, this bill, should it become law, would make it unlawful to host one of these applications on an application marketplace or store, but only within the United States. It does not prohibit anyone from having the application or from using it. I don't know if the members of Congress realize this, but the internet is international. So while this bill would make it unlawful for Apple or Google to host TikTok on their US-based marketplaces, it does not prevent them from hosting it on their foreign ones, which I suppose means they could list the app on their stores, but the link to download or update the app would go to a server in a foreign country. The other option would be for the user to simply get a VPN that would direct their traffic to a foreign country, then search their app store for TikTok. In either case, the people will still have and be able to update the app. Since this law only prohibits hosting the applications, TikTok would simply have to redirect TikTok.com to a server in a foreign country, and their website would still work. So this bill would have little impact on a foreign adversary, either collecting data on or influencing Americans. Well, then there's the ownership requirement for an app to be controlled by a foreign adversary. The term controlled by a foreign adversary means with respect to a covered company or other entity that such company or other entity is a foreign person that is domiciled in, is headquartered in, has its principal place of business in, or is organized under the laws of a foreign adversary country, an entity with respect to which a foreign person or combination of foreign persons described in subparagraph A directly or indirectly own at least a 20% stake or a person subject to the direction or control of a foreign person or entity described in subparagraph A or B. All a person or company would have to do is own less than 20% of the app to get around this. But as a stakeholder, would they not still have access to all the data? Could they not influence the development of an algorithm used to influence their audience? After all, the United States doesn't own Twitter or Facebook, but they've been able to influence both companies and impact both elections and the response to COVID. At that point, there's the question of, well, what is a foreign adversary country? The term foreign adversary country means a country specified in Section 4872D2 of Title 10 United States Code. What countries are specified in 10 U.S.C. 4728D2? The term covered nation means the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Then there's a the question of what companies are covered by this bill. The term covered company means an entity that operates directly or indirectly, including through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliate, a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application that permits a user to create an account or profile to generate, share, and view text, images, videos, real-time communication, or similar content, has more than 1 million monthly active users with respect to at least two of the three months preceding the date on which a relevant determination of the president is made pursuant to paragraph 3b, enables one or more users to generate or distribute content that can be viewed by other users of the website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application, and enables one or more users to view content generated by other users of the website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application. Now, while the Constitution study doesn't have a million monthly active users yet, I would like to one day. Users can create accounts, and one day I would like them to share information with other users. Does that make the Constitution study a covered company? This bill would require us to be 20% owned by a citizen of one of these foreign adversary countries. And we all know that Congress would never slip in an amendment to some huge omnibus bill to change those requirements, would they? While there are plenty of issues with this legislation, we haven't even covered the question of constitutionality. 
The first question that should be asked about the legislation is, is it constitutional? Look, Congress does have the power under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3 to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes. Now, Congress can regulate commerce with foreign nations, and TikTok is a commercial app owned by a foreign company. However, Congress goes too far with this bill, making it a bill of attainder, which is a legislative act which declares a named person guilty of a crime, particularly treason. How does this rise to a bill of attainder? Because it declares a specific party as guilty without a trial. The term foreign adversary controlled application means a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive reality application that is operated directly or indirectly, including through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliate by any of ByteDance Limited, TikTok, a subsidiary of or a successor to an entity identified in Clause 1 or 2 that is controlled by a foreign adversary, or an entity owned or controlled directly or indirectly by an entity defined in Clause 1, 2, or 3. Now, if you're worried about other apps, well, you have good reason. You see, in addition to targeting TikTok, there's another clause that allows the president to decide if a foreign company is a significant threat to national security. That's all this bill requires to declare a company part of a foreign adversary. A covered company that is controlled by a foreign adversary and that is determined by the president to present a significant threat to national security of the United States following the issuance of a public notice proposing such a determination and a public report to Congress submitted not less than 30 days before such determination describing the specific national security concerns involved and containing a classified annex and a description of what assets would need to be divested to exclude a qualified divestiture. Now, we've never seen a president declare someone or some company as a national security threat without probable cause, have we? And since this clause doesn't require the president to go through due process before depriving a company the ability to be available within the United States, well, that would make this bill a violation of the Fifth Amendment's due process clause, which reads, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Now, is anyone surprised Congress can pack so many ineffective and unconstitutional acts in such a short piece of legislation? I understand the desire to get TikTok but we shouldn't let our emotions lead us into making bad law. And there's a lot of bad in this bill. In addition to all the problems I've already identified, there's a major hole in this legislation. Not only would it not be effective in preventing foreign governments from spying on the American people, it completely ignores the spying that other applications have been doing for decades. With all the media focus on this bill, does anyone else wonder why all the other apps vacuuming up and selling our data have been ignored. Now, earlier, I alluded to the idea of treason, which is defined in Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution as treason against the United States consists only in levying war against them or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. If China is an enemy of the United States and TikTok is not only collecting data from them, but spreading propaganda as well, then wouldn't helping them do so be giving them aid and comfort? I don't think China is technically an enemy of the United States yet. After all, Congress has only listed them as a foreign adversary. What is the difference between a foreign adversary and an enemy? And if the plan we keep hearing that China has comes true, wouldn't they be a full-blown enemy then? Now, if Congress are competent and truly concerned about application spying on the American people, they would draft legislation that actually protected us. Instead, we see a bipartisan stand to screw up the situation even more. I cannot read minds, but my guess is this political grandstanding is more about votes this November than the title of the bill suggests. How often have I said, if you want to know the purpose of a bill, assume it's the exact opposite of the title. Now listen, I don't like TikTok. I know a lot of people who don't like TikTok. But is it really up to Congress to deal with this problem? Yes, it's a foreign commerce issue, but Congress isn't actually dealing with the commerce because they're not dealing with the data, which is what, act, which is what TikTok actually sells. They give away the app, so they're dealing with the wrong problem. They ignore the international aspect of, of these applications, and uh, well, let's just face, let's face it, their, their solutions wouldn't work.
even if they were constitutional. Part of the problem is I keep seeing people waiting for Congress to do something. Why aren't we doing something ourselves? You know, in my house, TikTok is banned. I have a filter on my website, and nothing to and from TikTok is allowed to traverse my website. It's not allowed in. It's not allowed out. It's not that hard. And the applications are relatively easy to find. Now, sure, my daughter could um, use TikTok on somebody else's network, but then again, there's only so much I can do, and she is an adult, so she can make up her own mind. The point is, we should be taking control. If we love our children and we believe TikTok is spying on them, then why aren't we controlling the applications on their phones, the networks they access, and the filters put in place? Stop waiting for Congress to fix this problem. You fix it. Now, Congress can deal with the foreign commerce aspect. I wish they would. But you can protect your network. You can protect your apps. You can protect your family. Stop waiting for Congress to do it, because as I've already shown, they're incompetent, especially when it comes to issues of high tech. Now, I hope you'll head over to the website constitutionstudy.com to find out more of the work we're doing here. Maybe take this, the video or the audio or, or the article for this and share it. Share it with others. Let other people know that this is not the TikTok ban that they've been told it is. And it's got some really serious problems. While you're at it, check out the Patriots program. You'll find the Patriots on the menu. It's a program to help people learn to defend and assert their rights for themselves and to protect others while they do it. It's invitation only. So to join the Patriots, you first must go through the boot camp. You'll find it on the Patriots page. The boot camp is free, and you'll even learn something. Then, if you pass the test, you'll get an invitation to join us here in the Patriots program. It's growing, slowly but surely but we're growing. While you're at it, also check out General Flynn's movie. Just go to constitutionstudy.com slash Flynn movie, F-L-Y-N-N-M-O-V-I-E, one word. Let him tell his side of the story of his career in the White House and what happened afterwards. You follow that link and you'll, you'll see the trailer. You can pay, you can get tickets for the live events. You can do a lot, but please go through that link. It helps that they know that this traffic comes from the Constitution study. Speaking of helping the Constitution study, are you tired of using your money to fund organizations that support DEI and, and LGBTQ and, and are pro-abortion? Well, Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless carrier, and we've recently partnered with them. That means if you go to patriotmobile.com constitution, you can get great deals on the, the plans that you need. You can purchase a phone or bring a phone with you. You get great U.S.-based technical support, and you help the Constitution study as well. Be sure to use the code CONSTITUTION at checkout. You'll even get free activation. Now, whether you, you join us on Patriot Mobile, whether you watch the Flynn movie through our, our link, or you just share some of the work that we're doing here, please do that. Let people know the Constitution study is here and the work that we're doing. And I hope you'll bring some friends and join us here next time for the Constitution study. Love the neighbors and have a few good.